Right now, I'm gonna go over everything that you need to know about painting laminate. We're gonna go over different types of paints, stain blockers. We're gonna talk about prepping our material and getting it ready for application. We're gonna talk about application styles, whether you're looking to brush it on, to roll it on, or spray it on. And then we're gonna talk about durability. How does it hold up? And there's something really important that you need to know about sanding first and why that's really important. Now let's go ahead and jump in. We're gonna start with paint. So you've got a couple different paint options. Traditionally, oil-based paint was the way to go because it had a more durable finish. Paints come a long way, and the paints that we're gonna be talking about are all water-based. The benefit with that is that it's easy cleanup, low odor, really easy to work with. So the paints that we're gonna be testing in this video, we have this Sherwin-Williams that's cabinet door trim and primer. Then we have a Valspar, this is cabinet furniture, it's an oil-enriched enamel. And then we also have a new one that I've tried this time that's Magnolia Home and it's cabinetry and furniture paint. Now I have used other brands like Inselex and they all work really well. Uh, it really just depends on your budget, what's available to you, and what sheen or finished product you're looking for. Another thing that you might want to look into or that you're gonna wanna have handy is this, this is a stain blocker. So if you're painting something, you know, I had this issue when I was painting my kitchen cabinets, I kept getting this oil and grease bleeding through, so a little bit of this really helped. Now you don't need a lot of it, and you don't need to apply it at the beginning. So what I do is I paint everything first, and then if I see anything bleeding through, then I hit it with some stain blocker, let that dry, and then put a little bit of the top coat back on. So that might be something that you run into. So now let's talk about these paints. I did mention a little bit before that they're all water-based, but they're not just wall paint. They're kind of a combination between oil-based and water-based. They're specifically made for high traffic areas, for kitchens, for cabinetry. They're not just your standard wall paint. They're a bit more expensive, but they have that really durable finish so that when they dry, I love them because they're in my kitchen, they dry, they have that nice finish, and then I'm, I'm spilling stuff. Um, they're getting hit with pots and pans, and that finish is really holding up. I can clean them with a towel with soap and water, and it doesn't come off of there. It holds up really well, so they've got a really nice finish. They are more expensive than your traditional wall paint, but that's why, because they have a really nice finish. So we will test all three of these paints here. I've got a couple different pieces that I painted and we'll see how they hold up. And then if you can tell already, they've got a different sheen to them. So it'll really come down to your personal preference on the finished product that you're looking for. So now let's talk about prepping your laminate and getting it ready for paint. So this is an unfinished piece. It doesn't have anything on it. It's clean, it's ready to go. It's laminate here. You are going to want to sand it first. I've done tests with it between sanded and unsanded, and we will here in a second, and you'll see the difference. You've gotta sand it. It gives that paint something to grab onto and it really holds a lot better if you sand it. So I've had great luck with 120 and 220 grit sandpaper and it's really easy. So you just take it, wrap it around a block and then you go ahead and scrub it or sand it. You do want to be pretty hard with it because you want to actually show some marks on there. That's when you know that you've got it sanded good so that you can uh, go ahead and apply the paint there. So let's go ahead and do a little area here. So that's it right there. That's what we're looking for and that would be perfect. The paint would really hold on to that. So that's what you're looking for when you're sanding it. You do want to make sure that it's obvious and that it is sanding down that material. That's gonna provide us a nice surface that's really gonna grab that paint and it's gonna hold on nicely. And that's gonna give us our durable finish, especially uh, if you're doing kitchen cabinets. So take the time. I would sand the rest of that. You know, if you've got cabinets, whatever you're doing, Hit it like that. Of course, you can use an electric sander, uh, whatever way is quickest and easiest for you. You want to do all of the surface that you will be applying paint to. You want it to look like that. So sanding is really important, and I'll go ahead and show you the difference right now. We'll just jump into that so you don't have to wait for that. 
So this is all three of these paints here. It's the Sherwin-Williams, the Valspar, and the Magnolia Home. And I'm not gonna tell you which is which because they're all gonna have the same result. They are going to scratch off here. So I can really actually just take my thumbnail here and I can actually just scratch it off. And it comes off fairly easy. Ooh, this one down here is holding up pretty good. So I haven't tested all of them yet. So here we go. That's interesting. This bottom one here is actually holding on pretty well and I'm not able to, oh, there we go. So there we go, I actually am digging into it here. So that one, very impressed actually. So that was the hardest one to scratch off, but ultimately I did get some off with my thumbnail on all of them. And now I'm gonna use something a bit more persuasive here. So I've got my paint can opener and I can just kind of go down here and scratch off the paints. So that's really important to note there. Um, these top two are coming off a lot easier and this bottom one here is really holding up. Uh, this is the first time I've tested this paint, so I'm fairly impressed with that. And then I will tell you that this bottom one here is the Sherwin-Williams. And then these top two, this one is the Magnolia and this is the Valspar. And I'm actually impre pretty impressed with that. I didn't expect it to hold up that well. It is scratching off, but it's holding up a lot better than the other two. So that's interesting, something to note there. However, I'm still not terribly impressed with that. I don't think I would um, you know, be super happy with that because it is still coming off pretty easily. So here I've got a board that I did before. I sanded on both sides of these. And again, same kind of test here. And it is not scratching off the paint easily at all. Now it is making marks here, but it is not scratching off the paint. In order to get the paint off, I have to get the corner in there and actually dig into it. So again, two sides here that I painted. This is the Valspar, Valspar, excuse me, oil enriched enamel. And it was three coats and I sanded both first 120 and 220 grit sandpaper. So now let's go ahead and test primed versus not primed. So here on this switch here, we have the three different types of paints here. So we've got Valspar, Sherwin-Williams, and Magnolia. And these are all, uh, I did sand first, as you can see here, if you can see the distressing up here. So I sanded first, and then uh, I hit it with some primer. So first things first, I'm gonna go in with my thumbnail and I can get some off if I really go for it. Ah, there we go. I'm not able to get anything there. But as you can see, it's holding up a lot better and it's not just scraping off like before. So that one's holding up well. Now I can damage the laminate where I'm putting a big groove in that, at which point no paint's gonna hold up. <laughs> if I'm really going hard enough to damage the material, it doesn't matter what paint's on there, uh, it's going to damage it. So those, that's the difference here between primed. So there you go. Now let's go ahead and look at this, which did not have any primer. Now, I don't know if you can see here, there's this little spot. Let me bring that over to you so you can see there. There's this area right here. And it's just, um, when you don't sand it, the paint really doesn't stick to it. It kind of separates. The paint doesn't want to stick to it. Um, so I don't know if you can see that there. I've got better shots of it. If you don't sand your laminate first, the paint just kind of slides off and it doesn't really grab onto anything. It'll dry on the top of it eventually, but it separates and you can really see that it's not sticking to the laminate. So that's really why it's super important to sand it. So again, this piece here, I didn't use any primer. 
I'm going to see if I can scratch it off here. And I can kind of catch a little bit, but it's nothing really easy. And then again, sanding it here or scratching it here, it's really holding up well. So again, back to the piece that had no sanding and the same kind of pressure here. And I can just scratch it off. with ease. So again, that's your proof right there. It's in the pudding. You've got to sand first. It's going to hold up a lot better. Now let's go over to the piece that I sprayed. So again, for this one, I just used the Sherwin Williams. I flipped a coin. I really didn't, you know, know which one to spray. So this one was thinned for the HVLP sprayer. So that's, um, high volume, low pressure. It's a paint sprayer. Uh, I love this one. It's the Wagner paint sprayer and I thinned it 20%. So it's four parts paint to one part water. And, and then I did of course, um, sand this one before as well. And as you saw there with my finger, it held up well. And then again, on the scratch test, I really have to dig into it. So as you can see, the difference here, this one was rolled. So I used the foam roller for these applications here. And then I used the sprayer for this piece. And I'm really impressed. I mean, it held up well, and this is even thinned a little bit. So you would assume that the, you know, the thickness and the finish would be a little bit compromised, but it held up really well. So I'm happy with that. So whether you're spraying or rolling, your finish is gonna be very durable either way. So that's something of note there. You know, uh, depends on how much you're doing. I've sprayed and I've rolled. They both have their pros and cons. Spraying takes a lot more prep work. So you're gonna to have to get everything out into a work area. If you're not moving everything, you're gonna to have to tape everything, cover everything. Wherever you are spraying, you're gonna to have to thin it down. Uh, so the prep takes a lot longer but um, you know it goes on nicely and then the finish if you're good at spraying can be a lot smoother you do want to be careful about spraying not to add too much the tendency uh, is to spray and continue to spray until you got nice coverage but what you could end up doing is put on a thick or too thick of a coat and then it'll drip and then instead of getting a nice smooth finish you're going to have drip marks coming down it so you do need a little bit more practice with that, but it goes on really quick, easy, and then cleanup's nice because again, soap and water, and you're just cleaning up the sprayer. You don't have to clean up a bunch of brushes. So really depends on your project. From what I'm seeing here, spraying and rolling are gonna yield both about the same results. So here we can look at the different paints that we've got. This one is the Valspar. This is the Sherwin-Williams and this is the Magnolia. So I don't know if it's picking it up on the camera there, but the Valspar and the Magnolia have a satin finish and the Sherwin has a flat finish. So that's something else that you'll want to consider. What type of finish do you want? I've really liked the satin finish in my cabinets or in my, uh, in my kitchen area and the bathrooms, the vanities. I like the satin finish. It's got a little bit of a shine to it. The Sherwin here is flat and it almost gives the color kind of a, a gray or yellowish undertone. And then the satin finish gives it a nice bright finish. So I like that satin finish. You could also go with a gloss or a semi-gloss. It's really up to you on finish. But uh, I really like the satin finish look to it. So if I was painting my cabinets with this, I would see maybe if Sherwin-Williams had a satin finish and maybe go with that. But I would be happy with any one of these, honestly. But the Sherwin-Williams would be lower on the list just because of the flat finish. I'm really impressed with how it holds on that. And actually, it held up best out of all three of them without any type of sanding or primer. So again, if we're looking at the differences here between your primed and unprimed, it's really uh, negligible, the difference. So you don't need to prime it, but cost. Remember, it's a lot cheaper to prime it with some cheap primer paint 
then add these more expensive top coats. So it really comes down to you on whether or not you want to do that and if you want to add that extra cost to it. If I had a smaller project, I might just skip the primer, jump right into the main paint that I'm using and not have to worry about switch back and forth between the two different paints. So there you go. That is everything that I know about painting laminate. Again, to kind of sum it up, you're going to want an oil enriched enamel type of paint that's made for cabinets and furniture. It's got that nice durable finish that will allow you to clean up and it's going to hold up to the abuse that it's going to get because it's usually typically going to be in a higher traffic area, furniture and cabinets. You want to sand it first. That is definitely uh, an extra step. It takes longer, but it's going to hold up a lot better in the long run. I've had luck with 120 and 220 grit sandpaper. You can spray it on, you can brush it on, you can roll it on. If you're spraying it on, you want to thin it about 20%. So that's four parts of paint to one part water. And then you'll want to have some of this on hand, uh, a sealer here or a stain blocker in case you're getting anything that bleeds through. Just touch that up and then you're ready to go ahead and rock and roll. If you want to learn how to use this sprayer, you can check out that video next. Again, my name is Drew. If you like DIY around the house, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.